Hello and welcome to the True Crime Guys podcast. I'm Lauren. And I'm still Michael. And we're back. We're back again. Yes, we are, Lauren. <laughs> back in studio. Obviously. Uh, thank you to all the True Crime people. If you're a new listener, welcome in. Welcome in. Yeah. Join us on uh, social media. Yeah. If you have time. At True Crime Guys. Go tell us what you think. That's right. You thank guys you suck. <laughs> you guys really suck. Yeah. I want to specifically thank people that uh, reach out and give us um, suggestions for shows. Yep, because we're doing one today. This week, actually, we got oh. a sig- we Sometimes it just happens. Like, yeah. we got an email. We'll shout you out at the end of the show, and it just caught me at the right time. We were looking for a new case this week, and it just we looked into it real quick. And I was like, "Oh, that's cool. We haven't done a case in this part of the uh, country, and I wanted to do one here." Right. And you know, so, in the time you said that we'll shout you out at the end of the show, you could have just said who it was. Nah. No. I mean, hold the okay. suspense. Oh wow! All right. Yeah. So, so wait to hear who it is. Yeah. So we we do listen to your suggestions. See. Yeah. Actually, most of the we look into them right. The usually, I look into it right away and just give it a quick scan of okay, because we get so many, I can't really like dive in and. Yeah, Lauren either accepts it or dumps it right away. So yeah. just so you know, it's so like, like uh, Tinder. I either swipe left or right. When you give a <laughs> when you give them a suggestion, just hit him back like five minutes later. Be like, you doing it or not, you asshole? <laughs> right. <laughs> like fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> I decided against you. I swiped right. Wait, which is left or right? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm swipe not. right. I think is you, you accepted it. I believe maybe. All right. Well, I swiped left on you. I don't know. I've been married for a long time. I know. That's what I'm saying. I've never once uh, downloaded the Tinder no, app. Never. We should have a true crime true crime guys Tinder. Yeah. And you can submit, like, your face is like your suggestion. It's the serial killer's face, and we either swipe left or right <laughs> on. <laughs> hey, that, that actually could that work. That actually works, right? Yeah, everybody would have to make different profiles for, like, who the, every time they want to suggest somebody. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> All right, well, let's dive into this week's episode. Are you going to say anything? No. Okay, uh, he's drinking his coffee. Oh, sorry. This is a quote directly from Robert Hansen himself. The worst there was that I was the rebuttal of all the girls around the school and so forth. The jokes. If I could have faced it, I know now if I could have faced it and laughed along with them, it would have stopped. But I couldn't at the time, and it just... It got so it controlled me. I no longer controlled it. All right, this week's episode uh, was suggested by Brooke A. or Kavik. I'm not sure because like, it's one of those things where the email was Brooke, but then at the end it said, thanks, Kavik. So I'm going to go with Kavik. Okay, uh, that works. She's up in Alaska. What? Yeah, and I've always wanted Beautiful to do a country. I've always kind of wanted to cover a case in Alaska because it's just pretty to look at the pictures, pretty to study. It is. I like the whole idea of sprawling mountains and woods and... This guy is the perfect example of a, a serial killer in Alaska because of what he what yeah. he did was hunt down women yeah. in the Alaskan wilderness and kill them. Oh, I thought you were going to say because he killed people and he lived in Alaska, right? Because that's really all you need. Yeah, to be the perfect example. The guy that we were focusing on this week is Robert Hansen. Robert the Christ- butcher fucking baker. Yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> the butcher baker is his nickname. As a serial killer, and yeah. we we both talked this week. We're like, that's just that's not, the worst nickname. It just like, doesn't work for him because he. I, I when I think butcher, I think of like Bob Berdella. This, yeah, you know the Kansas City butcher. I think of a guy who like cut up his right, victims right. and stuff like this. Guy didn't really cut. I anybody feel like up. this happened. Like there was some reporter who got called at like fucking one in the morning. Mm-hmm. And they're like, hey Bob, we need you to come up with a nickname for this guy. This guy's killing prostitutes. And, and, uh, it's gonna like, be the well, headlines. Tell, he's in like, the well, morning. tell me a little bit about him. Uh, well, he uh, he's a baker. Is that well, it? The butcher baker. The, <laughs> <It's> like, obviously <laughs> yeah, put your bacon. it's a wrap print it <laughs> right and these are obviously alaskan uh accents as well <laughs> the butcher baker <laughs> what is a alaskan accent? i don't know but it's Fuck not it. they know we only do new york accents know, around right? here <laughs> anyway Fuck so we guys do you want to go ahead and give our our nicknames for them and they'll make more sense as the episode goes on do you or do you want to like hit them with them during the show because we, we came up um, with a couple of nicknames we thought would be better for this guy I don't know. I guess you can go ahead and say. It. I mean, people kind of know about him. I would. We think. went in different directions with mine. I went yeah. with I went with Robert the Mountain Man Hansen because of the movie Deliverance, and he hunts down That's people in the woods. It's not bad. If you've seen the movie, it makes more sense. He's, right. And, and he's he was a hunter. He was like a big game hunter. Robert Hansen. I'm talking about. Yeah. And so it's like one of mine plays on the hunting thing too. Yeah. Yeah. You, he went with more of a comedy. How about how angle about, uh, on it. How about uh, Stutter Hunter? <laughs> 
<laughs> Y'all know that's fucking amazing. Yeah, well, the stutter hunter. It'll make more sense once we get into it. Because He's got a stutter. He has a stutter. And yeah. he hunts. So, stutter hunter. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I got I got another one, though, if, if you're not feeling that one completely. It's a little offensive, but I like it. I, I, got, I got another one. Uh, Pizza Face, the Alaskan disgrace. <laughs> that one is fucking gold. <laughs> <laughs> the Alaskan oh, disgrace. God. All I thought was like when he kept talking about his acne, and I was like, I thought about Pizza Face, and I was like, <laughs> fucking. It reminded me of all that. You remember that show? No. On Nickelodeon. All that. Okay, all yeah, okay, that. Okay, yeah, it was yeah. like it was like SNL for kids, mm-hmm. and uh, they had a character on there called Pizza Face. <laughs> I can't really <laughs> crack me up, dude. Yeah. Big ears and pizza. We've face, all dealt man. with acne, and if you still deal with it as an adult and stuff, you know we're not. We're sorry. That sucks, but yeah, this guy was an Alaskan disgrace for sure. Yeah, he he's, was. <laughs> he's not held in high regard in Alaska, I'm sure. Right, right. We're not going to make fun of you. And we feel like killer. he's an understated serial killer because of the fact that he made a plea deal in the end. And he didn't want he the made media it, attention. Yeah. He didn't want none of that He was shit. one of those rare serial killers that didn't like the attention. Right. And, you know, most of them, they, they just fucking loved it. You know, Bundy and all those guys, they just wanted as much press as they could get. Gacy, right. they loved all that. He was the opposite. He had a family and he didn't want to be... Right. He didn't want to bring attention to them either, right? Because he still held his wife, you know, at a pretty high, on a he- on a pedestal, I guess. Right. Even through all this, even when he like told her to go out, of, go to the Europe, so he could kill girls. Yeah, go to the Europe. Go to the Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that on purpose, or is that what he said? Uh, no, I I just I stuttered. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hey, you guys gonna go to the, the Europe this year? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get into him. All right. His name was uh, Robert Christian Hansen. He was born on February 15th, 1939 in Esterville, Iowa. Iowa, okay. Shout out to all the Iowans. Yeah. I don't know if that's how you say I'm sure they love the this shout out. Yeah, for sure. Thanks. Thanks for putting this If you're this listening to the show, guy. you probably do. Uh, his father was Christian Hansen, and his mother was Edna Hansen. His father was a Danish immigrant baker and kind of passed that along to his son, Robert. Yeah. He forced it along. Forced Robert. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, I don't think it was something Robert was crazy about, which Except is Except that he opened his own bakery shop later, so maybe he was. Well, maybe that's all he knew. Yeah. It's kind of... Uh, like know, those parents that force... You forced, plant the seeds you've been given, Lord. Yeah, like those parents that force piano on their kids, and they get yeah. really good, and they're like, well, I guess it's what I'm good at. I I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm going to do piano. I don't fucking hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, his childhood was pretty rough. Apparently, his father was very, you know, serial killer. His dad was very oh, overbearing. And Blame strict. it on the debt. Of course. Yeah. Serial killers have daddy issues, too. Yeah. Typically. Not just their victims. It didn't say much about his mom. Yeah. But his dad was very overbearing, made him work long hours in the bakery. Let with me him. guess. His mom coddled him. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that shit out there. Because like, it seems like it's a, such a... Right, uh, stereotype. You know, it's a yeah, it's an underlying stereotype. theme of like every every guy we do. Right. You know. His father, when uh, whenever he was bad, would just make him knead dough, knead dough for hours on end. That's what just I read. Kneading dough, yeah. and he was left-handed. He'd make him knead it with the right. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> you didn't take the trash out when I told you. Nine hours of kneading dough Nine, with the right hand. I'm gonna beat Won't you with have the... no left-handed stutterer in my house. Yeah, they were, the uh, rolling pin was always used in spankings. Ro- really, you think so? No. Beat him with a rolling pin? Right. That's not even funny. Man, don't even put that in there. Put what? Rolling pin. We don't even be saying that shit. Add extra stuff. Flourishing. You know we don't do that. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, he was also a teenage... As a teenager, he was like most of us. He was really skinny and had bad acne. <laughs> is that most of us? That was me. I was like, this is me, dude. I'm reading about myself. Knock on wood, I haven't. I've never had acne. Really? Yeah. We'll see what Aren't happens. Aren't you though. just fucking God's gift? <laughs> well, thank you. No, literally, his child, like his teenage years, I was six this- to 135 pounds, and I was pizza face for sure. Yeah, really. Yeah, I might have to see some pictures. We'll yeah. put it on Instagram. No, let's no. not do that. It's <laughs> definitely not that. Our show will just drop off. <laughs> like, I'm not listening this to this like fucking fuck. weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on! It can't be that bad. Uh, yeah, the, the being skinny and having bad acne, and then he also had a stutter. Yeah, uh, as which, Mike. yeah, which uh, it's really I mean, got it's, worse. It's un, it's unfortunate. Talk. We don't mean to make light of anybody that has a stutter. That's it's a kind of a no. tough thing to deal with. I'm sure it yeah. makes it. I'm sure it makes it hard to connect with any new people and all that stuff. And but, it made him kind of a loner in school. Yeah. Also made him be bullied because this is you know he's going to school in what the 50s and 60s. Right. You know, kids are rough then, and if you've got acne, you're kids skinny, and you've got a stutter. What? Kids are rough now. Kids are rough now. Kids but are always assholes. Back then, it's like teachers would jump in on you, too, and everything. It was like, there was oh, no... Oh, you think so? 
Hell yeah. <laughs> Chinchu was like, hey, pizza face. Right. <laughs> One side, number two. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty much how it was, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. Right. Don't but, stutter through it again. But a ton of kids. <laughs> Come on, we ain't got all day. We got lunch at 1130. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> right. No, I mean, I, I think every kid gets, gets bullied for, for something. Yeah. There's always a group that doesn't like you in high school. It's fucking high school. Right. Everybody's trying to figure out where they are, and then we tend to draw lines between ourselves in high school. You uh-huh. know, We're like, oh, I'm this, and you're that. I'm so, above you. Uh, yeah, I'm above you, or I'm below you, and you right. think you're better than me. Right. You know, there's, it's, there's all kinds of bullying. It can go both ways. Yeah, and as you had alluded to, he, he was also he was left-handed. He's such a left-hander. Like, a lot of these yeah. serial killers are left-hander. It seems like left-handed people are just a little different. Yeah. I'm not saying in a bad way. But like they're just I more eccentric. I, I feel like left-handed people are more eccentric or they, more yeah. creative. I think it's even proven. Definitely that they are. more creative. And yeah. you know, left-handed like pitchers and ball and stuff like they have a much better advantage because right. like the the. I'm glad you're right-handed because you would be like playing in the pros right now instead of doing this podcast. Yeah, fuck me. All the creepers would be. See, if up. I would have had like Rob, my dad would have been like Robert Hansen's dad and just kept putting the ball in my left hand. Right, <laughs> dude. <laughs> what was he thinking? Right. But yes. yeah, like you have a natural, like your arm slot's different on the left side of your body, believe it or not. Like your arm pitchers, slot? Yeah, that? like the way your arm comes over to pitch, uh-huh. it's it's different. So almost every left-hander has natural movement. The ball moves by itself, no matter how they throw it. Oh, wow. Yeah. You learn something every day. There you go. Uh, so yeah, like we mentioned, his father would force him. I, I don't know if it was his father or just like society in general forced him to use his right hand. It was mostly his dad, and it just added added stress to his life. Right. I mean, he was already very anxious. I mean, plus you're a teenager. Right. You know, so. Well, a lot of shit, you don't realize how much that, I think, comes into play. Like, everything is in, it mostly just it's a made for right-handed world. people. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it, even down to, like, a door. Like, the door handle's on the oh, right everything. side. It, it's just everything. Like, a guitar, you'd have like to get a zipper on your pants. Yeah. I mean, everything. Huh? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Holy shit. Like, everything is. Blowing my mind right now. Right-handed. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So, there you go. Guns. Did he have to get left-handed guns? No, I guess they'd no, be the those same. Are, those are pretty symmetrical. <laughs> that was a stupid comment. <laughs> All right, sorry. I'll keep them to myself next time. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, being forced to use his right hand, it says, he said that it later added stress to him and made things worse. You know, it's, 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 everything's compiling. He's the, the acne, the stuttering. He's, even, like, the, the hand he wants to use isn't good enough. Oh, can't use a strong hand. Yeah, and so he starts hunting in his teen years, um, and he never really stops. He, he loves hunting. He would later go on to be a really successful hunter and, and win trophies and stuff. We'll talk more about that. Yeah. But it's it's kind of where he started to develop this fascination with the woods and hunting and... And, and killing and power. And power, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I don't get off on the power of killing an animal when I go hunting. It's more for the meat and everything. But yeah, so, but you... I'm not denying that there may be some people that do. Right. You know, some of those weird trophy hunters that kill a big animal just to fucking show the pictures to people oh, and yeah. they don't even eat it. You the know, pictures that's... like with a bear. Right. I'm not even cool with that. But yeah. uh, in 1957, after graduating when he was 18, he enlisted in the U.S. Uh, Army Reserve and served one year before being discharged. While there, he became a skilled marksman. And uh, after being discharged back in Iowa at the town of Pocahontas, he became a dr- drill instructor for the police department. Hmm, but that wasn't hard, man, with a stutter. Yeah. Like yelling things at people. Yeah. I'm sure that didn't help his confidence. No. I don't know. Well, I mean, meaning. what are they going to say if you're the drill instructor? It's kind of like. Well, it's just the yeah, shit that they'll probably say. I'm sure he got off on the power stuff. of it, though, for sure. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, he probably, searched out, he probably searched out a job like that, I would think, hmm. where he could tell, tell people what to do, make them do shit. Right. <clears throat> on December 7th, 1960, hey, Pearl Harbor Day, he forced a 16-year-old employee at the bakery to help him burn down a school bus garage. And this is very Pans Ram. Yeah. You know, as another thing serial killers do <laughs> yeah. early, early on in their teen years, they seem like uh, arson is very common for right. serial killers early He's also on. still harboring resentment towards high school, too. Yeah. He's like, fuck you still, high school. Right. But this wasn't even the high school he went to. Like, this is in Pocahontas. He went to school in Esterville. So, but it's, it's still, it's, still it's like, it said that it was maybe retribution for perceived abuses by the people of Pocahontas, the town. Check this out. I got a theory. It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, so he, he forced a 16-year-old employee who most likely went to that high school, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe that kid reminded him of himself, and he was getting picked on. And he was like, you know Let's what? Let's get back at these fuckers, right? I know what to do. <laughs> He's like, do something I should have done in my high school. Some kid called you pizza so, face. Let's burn it down. Let's burn it down. <laughs> so you Come know, on, Pookie, we're burning this motherfucker down. <laughs> <laughs> and then like... But the, the, Pookie's the, like, but I don't really want to. Uh, well, the shitty part about that is the, the kids are at home just going... 
Fuck yeah, no school. I know, right? <laughs> school bus didn't come today. Good job, Pizza Face. Yeah, I think he- <laughs> <laughs> you're our hero, Pizza Face. Right? Maybe that was his goal. He wanted the yeah. kids to like him. He- Maybe. Who knows? Here he is, 21 years old, and he still cares. But know? anyways, the kid couldn't take the uh, stress of it. The yeah, the kid so. went and ratted on him, and Hanson was sentenced to three years in prison, and uh, his wife of only six months divorced him. We forgot to mention, actually, we passed over the fact that in, while in Pocahontas, he, uh, while during the time when he was a drill instructor, he met a younger woman who he married in 1960 when he was 21. So, right. But it was not long. It was literally the same year. It was yeah. later in 1960 that he got together with a 16-year-old and burned right. down this high school. So, exactly. And that quickly abrupted, abruptly ended his uh, marriage with this woman because while he was in jail, she filed for divorce. No. And that's, that's thus understandable. Ended, yeah, thus ended his first marriage. He's like, I don't know if I want to be forever. I don't know if that, my idea of a perfect man that I'm marrying forever burns down high schools when he's 21. Mm, probably not. Yeah, so he would end up, uh, like we said, getting sentenced to three years. It was just the bus garage, by the way. It wasn't whole high school. Oh, that's, yeah. that's lame. Yeah, so she, she may could have forgave him. Yeah. She really needs to need to learn how to work things out. Right. Uh, he would end up only serving 20 months of his three-year sentence. He was paroled. Despite being assessed as having an infantile personality. Right. Which made him very uh, vengeful. Mm-hmm. It made him like, he could not stand. The chip on the shoulder keeps yeah, getting bigger. He could not stand if some if he felt like someone owed him something. Someone yeah. acted like he was inferior. Or someone had wronged him. He just, he couldn't stand not being even. Mm-hmm. He had to be even. He would just harbor these grudges. Mm-hmm. It's, it's Sounds like a great of, guy. Part of the like personality being a, disorder. Being a friend with or anything like that. Yeah. As long as you don't do anything wrong to him, I guess. Yeah. Uh, within a few months of being rele- released from jail, he was married again. Uh, he, I mean, he he's getting a lot of attention from women to to be like, oh, oh, girls don't like me. That usually got doesn't. Two wives. That usually doesn't work. What? The whole playing on uh, sympathy with women. They just, yeah. It, no, sad. it doesn't. It gets you friend zoned real quick. Let's just say that. Yeah, it does. They feel like they're mothering you. Right. So I don't know how he did it. If he showed them like his like all of his. Uh, deer heads and stuff and they were right. just like wowed by it yeah it's just it's this weird. is alaskan women maybe they're I, different I, don't know. <laughs> I mean he's talking about women his whole life though for the most part there he right. that they wronged him yeah. but look here's like a public service announcement women don't have to fucking acknowledge you right like they don't like he's he's mad because these girls that he would come on to or whatever that were probably way out of his fucking league right didn't acknowledge him and like they don't have to right it That's doesn't make like, them assholes because they don't. They're not exactly. into you. It's like it's like when a, a guy like cat calls at a girl or whatever, and she don't do nothing. He's like, "Bitch!" I'm like, "How is she a bitch?" Right. You're a fucking douche. Right. Like she doesn't have to acknowledge you. She doesn't know you. Right. It's, she can just go about her business if she wants she to. She expected like you whistle at her. She's walking. At you, oh, baby. Oh, oh hey, you're, you're oh, interested, oh, huh? I love you so much. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's stupid, man. They don't have to. They don't have to. Nobody. No person has to acknowledge you as a person. You don't know what that person is going through. Right. It could be fucking depressed or or just afraid of you mm-hmm. or afraid of interaction. And in Hanson's case, they Shit. should be afraid of him because he hunted down women later in the woods and killed them. Well, yeah. Spoiler alert. So, and women are, you know, not just women, but people in general are intuitive. They know when a guy's creepy. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But either way, he was able to get a second wife. We don't know how. I'm know. sure he didn't catcall her. Like I said, he probably wowed her with his uh, hunting trophies. Maybe she was into I was that. I thinking tranquilizer dart to the ass. Yeah, maybe that In too. the supermarket. Maybe chained her up like he did some of the girls oh, in his yeah, basement. Oh, yeah, you think so? Yeah. Hmm. Um, anyways, uh, he would end up having two children with his second wife. Uh, and around this time, he started stealing just for the thrill of doing it. Another, yeah, he would just give shit away. Another power thing, another yeah. serial killer trait. The uh, just enjoying to take shit, right? It's it's weird that he had mm-hmm. all this stuff to kind of um, was feed this urge, I guess. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Like he he had a woman, he had a wife, right? So his sexual needs most likely were being met because they were still early in the marriage, right? And then he's stealing to to get that criminal urge, right? He's killing because he's hunting. It's like how much do you want? Right. This is a this a is greedy, a perfect case of the more you get, the more you want. Right. It's human nature, and like you see that you see you that see every some day. famous actresses that steal and like they've got all the money in the world. Right. Right. And it's like why? Well, yeah, and like football it's just the players, thrill of it, like I guess. professional athletes and things that that go back in the off season and then they they go back to stuff that they used to do before they got famous. Right. And or made all this money. Well, with like, him, why are you doing that? Well, with him, it may be not that simple. It may be more that he, because he was later diagnosed with bipolar disorder and he, he was put on lithium later. So maybe yeah. he just had some issues. 
you yeah, know maybe maybe he was one day he was fine with his family and every his life was fine and content and the next day he was like i need to do something you know it's just crazy to me that he's i need just, to steal some shit right now because i'm just he's kind of got to. that gacy thing going on except for he was even more of a quote-unquote pillar of society i mean like business owner family, he was not more of a pillar of society man. than gacy was dude i see I, that's no, the thing no. i watched that i watched the movie frozen ground with nick cage and yeah. uh what's his name john cusack john cusack it Cusack sense in there too. Cusack played Chris, uh, ro- played Robert Hansen in the movie, right? And like it shows him going to the bakery, and, and like he seems like this, like you said, pillar of the community. I, but when I watch documentaries on Robert Hansen, I read about him and stuff. He was just more awkward than that. I don't view him as like this. No, no, no. I'm not saying he was this charismatic. Everybody loved him. Right. But as far as, as far as, let's just look at his stats on paper. Okay, mm-hmm. he's a business owner. Right. He's a baker, which fucking so everybody was John loves Gacy. Bakeries. John Gacy was a business owner. Okay. Okay. Hold on. He had John a Gacy was a clown in his spare time and entertained family. children. He had a family. So did Gacy. Kind of. Yeah, but fan- but Gacy, even in the open, was having these huge fucking wild parties. He was known to be a raging alcoholic. This okay. guy wasn't. And he went to church every fucking Sunday. This guy did. Yeah, but Gacy was in How the uh, what was that club anymore? that he was in where he made you know, himself it just occurred to me. He may have misinterpreted the Bible. You know how it says, uh, be fishers of men? He may have just expanded that a little. And expanded it to be hunters of women. Oh. Yeah, you know? Hey, you, they say you can interpret it in your own yeah, way. Yeah, you can right? interpret it your own way, I think. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of paraphrasing in there. Right. So if you bring it up to, to more present times, you can maybe broaden your game. Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, you can you can uh, blame the Bible for what happened then with Robert Hansen. Wow. <laughs> That's what Michael's saying. <laughs> that right? is not what I'm saying. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty much. That is not what I'm saying. That's what I got from it. No, no, no. It's interpretation. Yeah. Well, anyways, he was uh, during this his little stint of stealing. He was caught and jailed several times. Uh, in a confession to police, he explained that it aroused him sexually to steal. Oh, that that answers all of our questions right there. He's just walking out the store with a raging boner. He he actually <laughs> hold the merchandise that he stole on his boner. Oh wow, like that's would, impressive. If he, would, if he would steal like a coat, he would just hang it on. I'm there. not even mad. I'm actually impressed. Right? Hey, <laughs> it's, just hang it on there and walk out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nothing to look at here. Nothing to look Nothing at to here. See. Don't act like you're not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't act like you're not impressed. Oh, geez. Uh, in 1967, the Hansons decided it was time for a new start, and they moved to Anchorage, Alaska. You know, it, it, he started to become an embarrassment in Iowa with all the uh, theft with his wiener. Right, right. And so they decided it was time for a change of scenery, and they moved to Anchorage, Alaska. Um, he actually did kind of fit in better in Anchorage, it seems. He was well-liked by his neighbors. Well, there's a lot of people moving here at this time because the Alaskan popular. Oh, man. Yeah, we'd have to talk a little bit about Alaska during this time, spe- yeah. specifically Anchorage. This Starting was, to boom. Yeah, this was the 70s. Uh, Anchorage was booming because of the Alaskan pipeline that was being put in. And yep. so it just it brought in so much shit just in general. Not like right. all bad, but it brought in a ton of money, which with money comes... Shit. Yeah. With money came sex and strip clubs and porn stores Absolutely. and pimps and crime and just it. It seemed I've seen photos of like pre boom and then after. Like you can look them up online. Anchorage in the seventies, how oh it changed. Gosh. Like it looked yeah. so pristine, and then all of a sudden, the pipeline <sighs> money rolled in, and like there was actually a. From what I read, there was a, a gangster, or like a, a crime boss in. I didn't even know they had him in Seattle, but there was like some Seattle crime boss <laughs> oh, yeah. who sent like a bunch of uh, prostitutes up to Alaska during this time because he knew all the money was there right, with all the right. workers. Yeah, and so like that, they got shipped in. Like these prostitutes got shipped in Jesus. to Alaska to you know fill the void for all these workers that were working on the pipeline, and then all these strip clubs. I'm sure there was already strip clubs, but I'm, yeah. I think they just started getting crazy when yeah. this, during this time. Right, and like we we'll, we'll have we have some more details on it here in a minute. Um, in the mountains around Anchorage, uh, he would he started Hanson started like honing in his skills as a hunter, and this is where he would go on to set records. Um, in 1969, 1970, and 1971, he had four animals entered in the Pope and Young record book. His record his records would later be nullified, though. That that's a well, conversation. That's on its own. I I agree. That's bullshit. I really do agree. Like, what's the one um, baseball player Pete Rose who got his all yeah. of his records taken away because he was gambling? It's, it doesn't. That the did, gambling didn't help him on the field. That didn't help him get over 4,000 hits. No. <laughs> the gambling didn't help yeah. him on the field at all. Fuck no. Like, if you were on PEDs, I understand, because it helped you get the records. Right. But, like, what does gambling have to do with the records he set on the baseball field? That's exactly right. But would he be um, more famous or less famous if he was in the Hall of Fame and they would have ignored it? That's true. He still, like, get lines oh, for autographs yeah. and shit now because of what happened. I seen, I seen him on a commercial, like, last year. 
Yeah. Where he's like walking through the hallway of his house. He's a weirdo. And they're like, uh, Pete, you know you're not allowed in the hall. He's a good commentator, though. Like, I don't even watch baseball, but he's yeah. like engaging when he starts talking about baseball. Like, I listen. I'm not even into baseball. Hell I'm yeah. like, damn. Because he just has dude. so much passion for it. Yeah. Uh, also, Hanson, to get back to him, had passion for hunting and killing, as he did with women later. But as as I said, to take his hunting records away because I, that's bullshit. Yeah, I'm not. We're not glorifying the guy. He was a scumbag. No, it's just it's just the fact that it happened. If if he if he hunted the largest elk or whatever, and I went to like, their website, it was still the largest elk. If like go, it's still good to know that yes. that elk is there. If you go to <laughs> if you go to Pope and Young's website, right, and you look at it, because I was I was like, oh, what's Pope and Young? I'm into hunting a little bit, and so I went and I looked at it, and it, right on the front page, it goes like, this is about honoring the animal, not so much the hunter. Right, it's like this animal is saying. an amazing. You still want to know that that animal was there right. in the first place. So now these animals are now getting smited for what he had done. So I say just, uh, like, admit the record is there and just go Robert Hansen slash hump scumbag killer, serial yeah. <laughs> killer. Like, may, admit that he killed these right, right. Uh, amazing animals. Yeah, that's not so wrong. That's not so wrong. Right. So as we were talking about with the construction of the Alaskan pipeline uh, and, like, the influx of money and trouble that it brought in, um, young women were lured there by promises of making huge wages, dancing in clubs like Wild Cherry, Arctic Fox, Booby Trap, and the Great Alaskan Bush Company, which is a great name for a strip club. <laughs> during, that, during that time, dude, you got to keep warm. No, no, You're going to have bushes. You. Well, they all had bushes, the 70s. Right. From what I hear. Um, also part of, part of that world was violence from beatings and armed robberies to firebombs and murders. Police were kept busy. Between 1979 and 1983, police responded to 207 disturbances at the booby trap alone. That's insane. Damn. In four years, 207 disturbances at the booby trap. Jesus. You know, in the movie Frozen Ground, uh, 50 Cent actually played a pimp. Really? On, on the, on I, the I, That's what I said earlier. 50 on that Cent little stretch. It. it was 4th Street at the time in Anchorage. It was like where these strip clubs and stuff were. And yeah. he, he played a really convincing pimp, man. Nice. He had like the, the lips because he's got, you know, he got shot in the face and stuff. He yeah. Was, he was, he was kind of scary. He's actually he's a really good actor. But actually, he wasn't like... He was like he wasn't the worst guy in the movie. Like he cared a little bit about the women that he pimped for and stuff. Right, and he right. actually tried to save the girl in the end. Damn, all right, fifty. Not a bad movie. All right. Frozen Ground the Frozen Ground, I was a little skeptical, like twenty minutes in, I'm like, Why am I watching this? Is this helping me with studying at all? Is this at all yeah. factual? It turned out to be fairly factual. There was obviously some drama citation to right. it. Drama, I watched the dramatization to it. And I thought it looked good. Yeah. Nick Cage, man. Nick Cage can't go. I had wrong. to work this week, so yeah. Some of us do. Yeah. <laughs> in, in November of 1971, Hansen was driving in the town of Spinard, had stopped for, uh, stopped at a street light and glanced over at a woman in the car next to him. She smiled at him, obviously, giving, yeah. him, giving him everything he needs, and giving like, him the green light. He's no like, pun oh, intended. I guess we're going to have sex now. Right. How about I pull this gun on you? So he regarded... In case you say no. Right. He, <laughs> he regarded it as an open invitation to point his gun and demand she come with him. The woman, still in her car, said, no, nah, I don't think so. Uh, I think I'm just going to drive away. And call the police. I'm going to take option B yeah. here. Seems... Now, there's also a second story to this. Okay. There's also another. This, It's said that this went another so don't, way. St- don't smile at creeps if they pull up. <laughs> don't, don't even look at fucking people. <laughs> look, like, <laughs> listen. This, this, just go around life being just, an asshole to everybody. Just, just don't even For look. your own protection. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, uh, no, there's a second story where he looks at her and she looks at him and she smiles and he doesn't do anything right there but he actually stalks her back to her house oh, or her actually, apartment you know did you what? hear about that yes i did right so i don't i don't know which one it is i, I hear the car one a little I bit i think more. that was actually a quote from him where he talked about i think that was in a police interrogation okay. or whatever investigate maybe where he said you know she smiled at me and i you know i, I harmlessly followed her because she was attractive harmlessly i was followed her back that's to her what he said i was like i was gun. he said he was like i was initially attracted to her so i followed her home you know yeah that's what you should That's do. That's what you do. That's what you do. You just want to see where she lives. That's all. Right. So she called the police, and uh, he was arrested. Uh, he was awaiting trial when he was arrested again after he picked up an 18-year-old prostitute outside a bar in downtown Anchorage, kidnapped her, and raped her at gunpoint. Jeez. And during the interrogation, he there was a quote from him where he said, you can't rape a prostitute, can you? Actually, you can. <laughs> yeah. Now, they are people. Common are misconception. Uh, you, you, you can, you asshole. Right. That's what they told him. And the district attorney was forced to drop the case after the prostitute who filed the complaint failed to appear, uh, failed to appear in court. This happens so often. This is a lot of times... But you can't blame these women for I, No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this has happened when we talked about Randy Kraft, when we talked about oh, yeah. bon, Bonin and all of these guys. It's because 
the people at the time in the seventies, prostitutes were looked at as lesser lesser right, human right. beings. They didn't also didn't like to cooperate with police because police weren't all that great to prostitutes at the time. Right. Like we said, they looked at them as lesser human Absolutely. beings. And so a lot of times these cases would get dropped and serial killers would go on to be prolific at killing these right, prostitutes right. because the prostitutes didn't also there was that gap between police officer and prostitute. They wouldn't communicate properly. And also police audits, a lot of times wouldn't take them at their word because right, they were right. like, I, I can't believe you. Look at your lifestyle. Yeah. Also, this sounds really obvious, but when you break it down, it, it just makes a shit ton of sense. And it's adults are allowed to be missing. If you're an adult, right. you're, and this is you're allowed to be missing. And these women are coming here from all over. Mm-hmm. Some of them made it. Some of them didn't. Right. Some of them fucking hated it. So they would leave. Yeah. There was plenty of, at this time, there was yeah. plenty of these girls that would... That would leave and not tell any of their new friends. And yeah, so we're not, they're like, I'm never going to see you again, probably. Yeah, so we're not completely blaming the police on that front because it was tough for them to track a lot of these girls that would come up missing because, like you said, they come into Anchorage for the money, yeah. and then maybe they decide they don't want to be a prostitute anymore. They don't like the way they're being treated, right. and they, they leave. leave. As an adult, you're perfectly allowed to do that. A lot of these girls were 17, say, oh, 18 years old coming to Anchorage to make a quick buck and, right. then, to, and then bouncing. So. Right. You know, and also a lot of missing people in, in during this time in Anchorage. It was commonplace for people to go hiking in Anchorage and just never be able, like, lose right. their lose track of where they are and, yep. and just die. There were bodies that would be found all the time yeah, from either wild elements. animal attacks or dying from the elements, right? Or just getting lost. Yeah, I mean, it happens. There's a lot of untouched ground out there, man. Right. It doesn't always mean that you're a victim of a serial killer. If right. You, if you came up missing or a body exactly. was found out in the woods out there, could have been a bear attack or something like that. Um, so he got off on the second case of the second arrest as far as uh actually raping the woman but as far as the spinard woman who he pulled the gun on in in traffic or whatever right he was still due to appear at court for that and superior court judge james fitzgerald sentenced hansen hansen to five years for drawing the gun on her and the heavy sentence was largely in, in due because he didn't fare well in psychiatric evaluation right uh however once in jail he immediately applied for parole and was in jail only from march to june this, you can't it, really blame them there. I guess if I ever was jail, that's the first thing I would do. Oh, yeah. You're going to try. <laughs> uh, where's the uh, parole office? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he got out early, and a lot of it is said that you read about is because violent criminals during this time in Anchorage, it was just a dime a dozen. There's a lot of violent criminals right. in that town during that time. We've talked mm-hmm. about it. It was a rough town at this time. And so they couldn't hold them all. I'm sure they didn't have huge jails during this time. They probably weren't ready for this boom with the, the oil. They probably didn't set everything up to where they had, like, Tons of jail space, so they had probably let a lot of guys walk that did shit like this. Damn. That's me speculating, for sure. That's what yeah. we do on the show. I hope you're not right. <laughs> <laughs> In June, he was assigned to a halfway house where he received psychiatric treatment until November. So at least part of his release was due to the fact that he had to get psychiatric treatment. Right. Now, following this, he becomes kind of well-known around the scene the bar and strip club right. scene and prostitutes start to know his name and oh, stuff yeah. like that. It's a network. He's often trying to lure strippers for money. Uh, mm-hmm. around this time. Um, he's always flashing a big wad of money. He was, It was tempting for some women, even though they kind of viewed him as creepy, like we right. talked about the intuition. You yeah. know, you can kind of sense when a guy's a creep. Absolutely. Um, and they should know. It's around this time that it's believed that he starts killing. This is in uh, 1971, around then, because on December 27, 22nd, 1971, Celia Beth Van Zanten, who was 17 years old, disappeared. Um, he denied this one later on, during his uh, plea deal. Right. But a lot of the, the ones that he denied, uh, it's believed that maybe he denied them because they weren't prostitutes. This is a great theory. I did not hear this. Uh, Lauren had told me this before the show. I read it and somewhere, I and it makes a lot of sense because it he... It does. Um, Hansen, in specific, Hansen specifically believed that prostitutes were lesser, like they weren't... Well, he had two classes of women. Right. He had, he had good women. It were, I guess, stand-up women or... Either you know good mothers, or mm-hmm. you know had dec- had good careers and were stand up women of society, or you had hookers and prostitutes and right. dancers. He he, he from what all I understood, women together. From what I understood, he didn't even believe that his wife uh, should give blowjobs. That's why he would go to prostitutes before, because he that's his idea of like right. a good woman. Because we talked about him going to church and stuff like that. Yeah, like he wanted to keep her sacred. Like she was. Yeah. yeah. She was, like I said earlier, she was up on that pedestal. And so if he was killing girls that weren't prostitutes, then he couldn't justify that to himself. So that's part of why he, it's believed that he didn't admit to these early murders, um, in the, in the early seventies. Um, now Celia, we talked about, she was on the map and her body was found at the X on the map. 
Right. But in uh, July 1973, Megan Emmerich, who was 17 years old, um, she disappeared. And she fit his MO of what he was looking for. Right. She fit the age, the look. Um, he denied killing her, uh, but it was suspected because of an X on the aviation map. However, the body was not found. So a couple of these girls in the 70s, our theory is that uh, there's X's on his map, which we'll talk about. He right. had a map much like Randy Kraft's scorecard. Um, which marked X's where bodies were found. Yep. Some of the X's were unaccounted for. Some of the X's they went to and there was no body. However, elements could have caused that. Yeah. And so I think what happened was some of the, like, these two girls, Megan and Mary Kathleen Thrill in 1975, who's 23 years old, these two, uh, the police suspected he did it because there was unaccounted X's on his map. Right. And he was working during this time killing girls and, and leaving them out in the woods and everything like that. Right. And, and they came up missing. Um in 1975, a prostitute complained about Hansen to a rape crisis center, and the center reported the assault to the police. After a while, the woman refused to cooperate with police, and no char- charges were filed. We talked about that yep. disconnect between police and prostitutes during this time. Can't blame them, man. Can't blame the other side, really. You can kind of blame the cops, in a sense. Like, Can you? I mean, I know, I know the prostitutes are probably hard to deal with because they probably didn't want to cooperate with police, too. Yeah. But at the same time, like there, you can watch interviews with police in some of these documentaries where they go, where they sit there and admit they go, yeah, police, they had an unfavorable lifestyle, so we kind of didn't listen to them. Oh yeah, we didn't well, take their true. word at their word. That's true. Most of the time, um, you got to think of how many accounts they had of that, you know. Right, yeah. but with his prior record, with the attempted rape, um, and then the rape charge that was never followed up on, if they would really like had done their due diligence, this one. Here, if the if the prostitute had cooperated with police, the police had cooperated with the prostitute, they could have brought him down and put him away yeah. for a long time. However, it's one of those things. Serial killers, they always seem to get away with a few things where it could have yeah. could have ended for him, but it didn't. There's also always a few close calls. Right. And then in 1976, Hansen was arrested for stealing a chainsaw from a Fred Meyer store in Anchorage. That's crazy. Letting his theft uh, get to him again. Stealing a chainsaw. He gets put away for this one, too, man. There's only one way you steal a chainsaw. What's funny is he's getting away with these, like, rapes, attempted rapes, and then a chainsaw takes him down for a while. (laughs) They threw the book at him for this. You don't don't steal a steal. You don't do it. Right. (laughs) Do you chase a guy that stole a chainsaw? I feel like that guy's got nothing to lose. (laughs) Listen, there's one way you steal a chainsaw. He didn't carry that out with his boner, that's for sure. And that's acting confident as hell. Right. You got to go in there. You got your logging boots. Rip that. Fire that shit up. Bring a gas can with you. Exactly. Bring some oil. Bring some oil. Right. Yeah, wear your damn flannel shirt, roll the sleeves up, right? grow your beard out. Who's, who, who here is going to stop me from taking this chainsaw? Just start that bitch up, right. walk right out the door. I got some shit to cut down. Right. Well, the police ended up catching up with him, and they treated it, treated his offense severely because of his two previous felony conv- uh, convictions. The fire in Iowa and pointing his gun at the woman in Spinard. Uh, the judge sentenced him to five years. Hansen appealed to the Alaska S- Supreme Court, arguing that his sentence was excessive. The court would actually agree with him. Wow. Setting Hansen free in August of 1978. So he got out somewhere like a year and a half to two years later. Oh, God. Um, the stable family and his job helped help the cause. I believe he was working as a baker during this time in town. He didn't mm-hmm. own his own bakery shop quite yet. Right. Um, he was ordered to stay on a lithium program to control his mood swings from a diagnosed b- bipolar disorder, which we had earlier alluded to. Yep. Uh, the order was never enforced, however, so it's unclear whether he actually took the lithium or not probably not you know judging off what Um, he would later do yeah i'm gonna say no okay yeah maybe not i mean you never know how people are gonna react to things maybe Maybe it caused drowsiness maybe it didn't work for him yeah that would have been the best thing you can't fall asleep if you're an airplane that would have been the best thing for society if he was drowsy all the time fell asleep in the plane yeah (laughs) (laughs) mayday he's too drowsy to even say mayday (laughs) Later in 1978, Hansen applied for his pilot's license. We've been talking a lot about planes. Here we go. Here we go. On his application, he said he was taking lithium, and he was denied from the license because of it. And so they gave it back Naturally. to him, and he just crossed it out and gave it back. <laughs> it was like, um, I mean... What I said about lithium... I mean, uh, I'm I mean not that. taking lithium. Right. And he gave him like, that. oh, he gave I approved. Him that. <laughs> he gave him that. That's literally what happened, though. In a subsequent application, he did not list any drugs, and he was granted a license. <laughs> or like Michael said, he scratched it off. <laughs> he whited it out. Right. He's got any white out? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sir. What do you need it for? Uh, no reason. I'll be right back. Yeah. Uh, in January of 1981, Robert Hansen becomes a successful business owner after opening a bakery. Now, how he opened the bakery, how he got the money to open the bakery is interesting. Genius, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, no. really, it <laughs> I'm worked. I'm not glorifying this shit, but... It worked. He said that his home was robbed, um, and 
that like all of his trophy hunting, his his trophies from hunting were stolen, and all this stuff was stolen, and he so, got insurance money from it. So is he, he's talking about like his stuffed animal heads and shit like that, yeah. right? Okay, it's not cheap to taxidermy animals. No, man. no, they're, absolutely not. But I feel like that stuff is only valuable to you. No, it's valuable. Like even antler sheds and stuff have value to them. They like a good like a trophy, like what he got, where yeah. he's like on in these websites and well, yeah. there wasn't websites in eighty one, but well, I can see people, yeah, I guess magazines and shit. Like when he's got these trophies that everyone's wowed by, those have value to him for sure. Okay. I just feel like I wouldn't want something hanging on my wall I didn't shoot. I'm like, yeah, well, you're not an cool. asshole. I didn't shoot that, but uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Huh? Some guys like to brag like they did some shit they didn't do. Oh, okay. So anyways, he bragged that these were, he didn't brag. He <laughs> claimed that these were stolen. They were not. They were later found in his shed in the back. A couple years later. A couple years later, but he yeah. took the insurance money and he opened his own bakery. Oh, geez, I misplaced them. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh, they were in the shed the whole time. Have some donuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, now this is where the police finally start to link things together. They notice that there's women coming up missing from the same Avenue club. And at first it's being dismissed. Like we said, it's hard to track these, these prostitutes are coming into Alaska. They're leaving Alaska. Uh, but they've been receiving complaints about missing topless dancers who frequented the strip joint on fourth Avenue. Um, and they finally started to take it serious when they realized that since 1980, six dancers had disappeared from the fourth Avenue clubs. Um, on June 28th, we'll go through some of the, we'll go through these six. So in June, uh, 28th of 1980, Roxanne Eastland, 24 years old, disappeared. In July, Joanne Messina, 24 years old, uh, disappeared. These are in close succession to each other. Yeah. Uh, July 21st, uh, Yuklunta Annie, uh, she was 16, between 16 and 25 years old. Um, and then uh, September 6th, Lisa Fertrell, 41 years old. Uh, and then in 1981, November 17th, Sherry Morrow, 24 years old. And December 2nd of 1981, Andrea Altieri came up missing. So Anchorage police quietly formed what they called a dancer task force to look into the disappearances. Then on September 13th, 1982, a female body was discovered in a shallow grave by the Kinnick River in the wilds about 15 minutes north of Anchorage. Now this Kinnick River area is where he liked to... Seems like where he liked to hunt these girls, he would take them out to this Kinnick area. There's a Kinnick right. forest. Um, this was one of his areas he liked to work. And this is one of those areas that was not reachable by vehicle. Right. She had been shot once with a, 220, a 223 caliber bullet. A shell casing was found nearby. And in late September, the police got an ID. The victim's name was Sherry Morrow. She was the dancer at the Wild Cherry Club who had disappeared in November of 1981. Then on June 13, 1983, a young prostitute named Cindy Paulson was spotted with a handcuff on her wrist by a trucker. Now, this is where things start to really get rolling. Right. And, and, and eventually sp- uh, spell the end to... It's planting the seeds of Hansen. conviction. Yeah. Because links start being made here. So, uh, like we mentioned, on June 13th, Cindy Paulson was spotted by a trucker with a handcuff on her wrist. He gave her a ride to a motel where she waited for her pimp, who was played by 50 Cent in the movie. <laughs> And he came uh, to her rescue. Yeah, she also called the police from her hotel room. And t- the first to arrive was Greg Baker. He plays a big role in this whole thing. And, Nicholas and, Cage. And, and, no, that's not Nicholas Cage. Oh, sorry. <laughs> He's played by assumed. some nobody in the movie. Oh. I think Nicholas Cage is like an FBI agent or something in the oh, movie. Oh, okay. Of course. Of course, he wouldn't play Greg Baker. No. Greg Baker is probably one of the more important people He's that took the, down one Hanson, of the- though. Maybe the most important person. Yeah, he's the one that believed... He was one of the few guys actually believed a prostitute for her word. Right. So what she told Baker was that a man had offered her $200 for oral sex and then handcuffed her and forced her at gunpoint into his car where he drove her to his house. And uh, during this time, it's important to note that Hanson's wife and children were vacationing in Europe. He sent them away so yeah. he could do his exploits. In the uh, Europe. In the Europe, yeah. <laughs> once, once back at his house in his basement, surrounded by all of his animals that are staring at you, which must make it that much. Oh, it's got to be creepy. Must dude. make it that much creepier. Oh, yeah, yeah. All those eyes uh, staring at you from the wall. Right. Once back at his house, he raped her and tortured her. Afterwards, he drove her to an airport and put her in his bush plane. We've seen pictures of this little plane. It's like a little crop plane, right? Like yeah. A, also, he had. I mean, I think it's important to note that he chained her to a beam in the ceiling, right? To do this, she like, she gave so much detail to the police. Yeah, what the inside so of his house looked like, what the car that he drove. Uh, he she even gave like I, I believe the the numbers on the fin of his plane or whatever. I don't know if the fin is a proper term. Probably oh, not. Oh wow. But. Yeah, I knew she had described his house almost perfect. Right. I mean, where the heads were mounted, what's on where the, the floor, house was, where it was, what it looked like, right. what his den looked like. Yep. And uh, so. 
the numbers on his plane. And so while he's loading his plane, she she knows that this probably he says he's gonna take her to his cabin. She knows this is probably the end for her. If she well, he told her if if she cooperated, then he would let her go. He and did actually fairness, do that. He did that a times. lot. Yeah. But I According think once he got him out to the wilderness and they took the plane ride, there was no coming back from that. Yeah, he, I think it was when he would take he, him back to his house if they cooperated with him, or not cooperated, if they cooperated with him and did everything he asked him to do. He right. just liked that power. I think he liked power over women and like a, a more attractive woman that he thinks he couldn't get them the, the right way. Right. You know what I mean? The natural way of like, you know, going up to him, talking to him, whatever. Mm-hmm. He wanted the power over him. So you pay him for sex and then rape him and whatnot. Now, and if they. Yeah, it's insinuated that he let quite a few girls go, but that that just doesn't seem very believable to me because I feel like they're going to go back and in their network, you know, these girls like, even though they're, they're prostitutes, they're still talking to each oh, yeah. other. They're still looking out for each other, and I feel like they're in that network. Word's going to spread. Like, don't even get near this dude. But at the like, same he freaking time, took me to this cabin. Like, but at the same time, I think it's a very transient position during this time in Anchorage where some of them are, like we talked about, some of them are coming in. There's new ones coming in, old ones going out. Some of them are going coming up missing. Yeah. And so I don't know how much communication there truly was. I don't know. And just, how many of them stuck around for very long to where they could I mean, warn I never, new ones about it. I never know? saw any concrete evidence in any of the research I had that he'd let people go. And they weren't all just prostitutes. A lot of them were strippers that he coerced with promises to take photos for cash he would do that right right because a lot of them were they didn't want to be strippers they wanted to be models you know right so they're thinking oh this might be my big break to... right so i use the old Dahmer uh, technique right so while he's loading up his air his airplane is when she escapes she runs she jumps out of the car she runs down the tarmac and finds her way out of the airport and on right. the highway where she finds this trucker we talked about who picked her up took her back to the hotel room yep and giving the story to greg baker in, in extreme detail but it just didn't matter because Hanson, uh, we mentioned he had some friendly neighbors, people that he was friendly with. Yeah. They, he convinced them to give him an alibi. Two neighbors did. Yep. Gave an alibi for right. him. And so that... They didn't realize the extent of what was going on, though. No, they, they didn't, they didn't realize what they were giving him an alibi for. They didn't realize right. they were giving him an alibi for rape. And what's, pretty, what's crazy is Hanson, he only hid like stuff that was detrimental to that crime. Like, everything else was still kind of out. Like, he hid the gun that he used. Oh, he had guns he had all mementos. over his house. The chain yeah. was not on the ceiling anymore. Right. You know, stuff like that was, was hidden. But for the most part, everything else was kind of out in the open. Right. And so, the police, from the police perspective, they see uh, they see a prostitute who they already look at as lesser than. They got a guy who is a family man who owns a local business. They mm-hmm. don't look into his fucking past, of course, initially. No. When they hear this report, I don't know that how that's not the first thing you do. Um, First thing, yeah, Greg Baker's check. superior never looked into his, never looked into Hanson's past. He sees that he has two alibis, and they go, "This none of this is going to hold up in court. Uh, we're going to postpone." Yeah, we're they, gonna, they basically suspended the investigation yep. into Hanson, but Greg Baker was not happy with this. He, he was, was going gonna against go. his department and and continuing to research this. Yeah, he, he, he took a real risk here. He actually took it's like the, something from a movie for real. <laughs> he did what his superior should have done and looked into the criminal history of Hansen, right. found that he had uh, pr- previous uh, attempted rapes on his uh, record. Right. He was, you know, theft and, and arson and all this stuff. He's not your just average good family guy going to church and, and owning a business and everything. He's, exactly. There's something about this guy. Um, he would end up bringing the records that he had looked up on Hanson to state police. Uh, and they were starting to investigate these missing uh, women from the strip clubs. And, Finally. And, right. And so this is when it all really starts coming together because on September 2nd, 1983, the body of another victim of Hanson, well, what would turn out to be Hanson, the police didn't know it at the time, but the body of another woman popped up while they were paving, they were putting in some road, they were doing road right. construction, uh, and they discovered the body of Paula Golding, um, the gravesite could not be reached by foot or vehicle, only by plane. So hmm. there's a link there. They're starting dun, dun, dun. to go, okay, these bodies are out and really... And yeah. also found at the scene was that of a two twenty three caliber bullet. No way. No way. No way. Get real. Co- dun, dun, dun. This is Cold Case Files' favorite shit. And there's matching bullets, and they can show you the like the stock image, stock yeah, footage of like a, a, a fake scientist like zooming in on the. Yeah, they're like, look at this shell casing. Now look at this one. They roll it together, they and then it, the lines match up. The Virgin Mary on them. <laughs> 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 what are the odds? <laughs> what are the we odds? thought the Virgin Mary only made appearances on. We toast. suspect this is the same weapon. Right. So they got the two twenty three matching bullets now on two different women. They're they're also you know seemingly fitting a, a 
they're fitting. It's two women around the same age, work, yeah. working women on uh, you know in the streets. Right. <clears throat> so now the uh, stateies are convinced that there is a serial killer working. Finally. Finally. And so that when they um, hear Greg Baker bring. They're they're investigating people like they're looking into people they're suspicious. Right. They have a bunch Suspects of potential. Town, right. They have a bunch of potential uh, leads on on people. But then when right. Greg Baker brings them the files on Hanson and tells them about the report from uh, Cindy Paulson, they start going, "Okay, this guy." There's yeah, starting to add up. Yeah, they start really digging in. Uh, they begin looking into Hanson again, and they actually con- uh, contacted the FBI. Uh, for a profile, so yeah. they they They're don't like, they don't tell even them. Even though this is definitely the guy, we just want to be sure that it's definitely the guy. This is kind of fascinating how they did this. Now, th- this isn't a common thing, I don't think. The the stateies they contact the FBI and they tell them what's going on. They say we found these bodies. This is this is what's going on. These these are uh, prostitutes and strippers. Right. They're found. They're telling the crime in this fashion in the woods. They're working backwards, so to speak. Buried in shallow graves. Yeah. And what the FBI profilers were able to was able to do was come up with a profile that fit Hanson almost to a T. They probably just they probably just know about fucking Hanson. They're like, just tell him exactly what Hanson is so they'll arrest this fucking exactly. guy. Exactly. I feel like, like that too. I Jesus really Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously him. Yeah, so the profile that the uh, FBI profiler was able to come up with, he said that the killer would have low self-esteem, would be into hunting, would have a history of rejection by women, uh, and would also probably have a stutter. A speech impediment. He wasn't that specific. Speech impediment slash stutter. That's crazy. Yeah, so it's so, like... It, that's what I'm saying. There's, <laughs> They just knew of him already. They're the right. FBI. They know everybody. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, okay. we've been watching... We've been tapping this guy's phone for years. Right. <laughs> yeah, so uh, investigators would then start tracking Hanson. They followed him to work and asked him to come in for uh, questioning at the police station. They also got some donuts because he is at a bakery and it's, of they are cops. Of course. Don't be ridiculous. Um now, this is crazy. In the interrogation room, they had this thing all set up for him. They had all the photos of the missing women, like a shrine set up in the wow. interrogation room. Candles? And simultaneously, they had brought all of the stuff that they had on Hanson, the FBI profile. They had brought um, you know, his prior conviction for attempted rape and all this stuff. Yeah. and arson. They brought that to a, a district attorney, and they'd right. gotten uh, grants for uh, multiple searches of his house. Right. So while they're doing this interrogation of him, they're tearing apart his house, looking for just like Casey. They're, yeah, they're looking for a two twenty three caliber rifle mainly is what they're looking for, so they yeah. can link the gun to these different bodies and the shell casing, so they can match the gun to the right. Cue the cold case files. All right here we go. I'm not going to do it. We go ahead. Right. While and, then, and also while they're conducting this search and while he's being interrogated, uh, a neighbor came over because they see all this commotion going right. on. They see these all these police officers tearing apart the house, and they go, "What? What do you guys?" Uh, what did Hanson do? Yeah. What do you guys think he did? And they go, they tell him the neighbor how serious it is, and it's actually the wife of the guy who provided the alibi. And she goes, Oh, oh my God. he might have be a serial yeah. killer. My oh. husband may have given you a false alibi. He I may, think I should mention that. He may not have he been may with have, him that night. He may have helped your. He may have helped this guy kill women and, and get away with it. For me, I think. <laughs> for me, for me. Sorry, we're huge Bill for fans. For me, I think. Uh, <laughs> It was wrong of him to maybe give an alibi that helped a girl get raped. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and come clean on that. Don't hate us. So don't give alibis to people if you don't know them that well. Or just don't give alibis. (laughs) (laughs) Just don't give alibis to people. All right. If they did Duly noted when you call me up again, Lauren. Now, Michael, that's a different story. Oh, okay. My true crime... True crime guy, buddy. That's right. The other true crime guy gets a pass. I'll help you bury bodies. Oh, okay. Fair enough. All right. So they tear apart his house while they're interrogating him, and he's not giving him he's not giving them anything. This guy's a stone cold killer. He's yeah. He's basically admitting. He's like, to, nah, it doesn't sound like me. He's admitting to things that they had on record, the attempted yeah. rape, and he's going, you know, well, I just didn't, I didn't think uh, prostitutes they deserve the rights of like normal women. You know, I, I I just couldn't help myself type of shit. He's right. He's telling them that he, he he couldn't help himself. He's admitting to shit that they had on record on him, but nothing that they thought he had done, and they right. pretty much knew he had done. He wouldn't give them anything. So they're depending on finding this two twenty three gun or any kind of um, keepsakes that he had from the victims. Right. If they could find a necklace. That was part of the profile as well. I don't know if we mentioned that. 
but the uh, profiler said that he would have some sort of trophies. Right. If he was a trophy hunter, is like he's going to keep trophies from all of his. Yeah. Hunting. So in all this, this is all in the movie uh, Frozen Ground. Nick Cage is interrogating him, and he's he's also talking to the <laughs> uh, to the police team that's searching the house, and he's going, yeah. "We need something. Find a fucking gun." Right. <laughs> we need that. They're finding like nine hundred guns in there, but they're not finding any two twenty threes because right. he had strategically hidden that fucking thing. Right. So at the end, at the end of the night, Nick Cage shows up to the house, and it's kind of how I picture it really going down. He jumps in Eleanor and freaking drifts. Into the driveway. <laughs> the GT500. <laughs> the GT500. Yeah, what do we got here? <laughs> yeah, no. So, um, the investigators tear this house apart all day long. They can't find the 223. But he, uh, they end up pushing through and, and continuing to search. And eventually, right. Nick Cage gives them a, a, a speech about, you know, we only get one chance to tear this place apart. I want you guys, if it takes all night, find that gun. Right. They go up in the attic, and underneath some uh, insulation, insulation yep. they find... Uh, not only the gun. Not only the gun, they find all kinds of shit. Mementos. They find uh, the ju- pieces of jewelry from victims. They find newspaper clippings, right. a Winchester 12-gauge shotgun, a driver's license, various IDs, some of which belong to the dead women, and uh, last but not least, the 223 mini 14 rifle that he had used to kill these women it's a wrap and then of course an fbi forensic lab matched the shell casings found near the victims to the mini 14 found in hansen's house yeah. and at that point he's like all right you guys got me and this also points to his uh disorder a little bit the fact that he couldn't even get rid of the weapon because um one of the uh profiler also stated that he, he would feel he liked, that he the, liked weapon the weapon was be- a part of him right yeah, like that weapon is a part of him, who he is, what makes him powerful. Without that weapon, he's nobody. Well, memory is fleeting. So, like, if serial killers get off on killing someone, it's like if all they've got is their memory and that's it, they don't have like yeah. things to look at that remind them. Like, they yeah, want to. Memories they, suck, man. Memories change. Yeah, and they want how you feel. I can get it. They want to look at like a piece of the person that they killed. They want a piece of jewelry that they can it'll help spark that memory a little bit better, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so once they had all of this on him, they threw all the they threw the fact that they found the two twenty three at him. Um, him and his attorney sat down and they made a plea bargain. They basically agreed to uh, come clean on the four murders and uh, plead guilty on those, but they wanted only those four murders him to get charged with, and they also right. wanted to be kept quiet as far as um, they wanted to avoid media publicity. And he wanted to serve his sentence in a, a federal prison outside of Alaska. He didn't want mm-hmm. to be pr- imprisoned in Alaska as well. I don't mm-hmm. know why. Maybe he didn't want to be um, visited by his family or something like that. Or I, I don't know what the reasoning behind that was. Um, Strange. Basically, and also, they sit down and they start. He would admit to anything that they could prove. Like, if they could sit down and prove that he had killed a girl, he'd go, okay, yeah, I'll give you that one. <laughs> All right, you got me. Yeah, you got me on that yeah, one. But he would he one. would make them work for it in right. a sense, and he would end up um, the map that we kind of uh, talked about a little bit. Right. They found this map at his house as well, and it had markings of all the victims. That's right. Not all the victims, but they had markings where there there was bodies found, and then there was markings where there was no body found. But they suspected there was like something like thirty different markings on this map. Yeah, and they most weren't investigators able to suspect he killed 30 plus women. And he would end up confessing to kidnapping and raping more than 30 women as well. A lot of them he would let go, like we talked about, if they cooperated with him. Right. Um, he would end up showing investigators 17 grave sites in and around south, south central Alaska. 12 of them were unknown to investigators. Um, there remained marks on the map that he refused to give up, including three in Resurrection Bay near Seward. Authorities suspect two of these marks belong be- to Mary Thrill, and, who we talked about, Mary Thrill and Megan Emmerich, whom Hanson had denied killing, and those are the ones where they what? weren't prostitutes, and that's right. why he wouldn't give them up. But why not at this point? I mean, he still thinks. I think I, st- I still think part of him thinks that he what he did wasn't that bad because they were prostitutes. But if he admits to to killing girls that weren't, then he he can't face himself yeah, in the mirror that, at that point. That has to be the only reason because I mean, if he if he viewed all his killings equal. What's another three or four killings? Right. I mean, at this point, I'm not saying the lives are worth less, but what I'm saying is your point, <clears throat> you're going to jail forever, okay, mm-hmm. regardless. Like, you might as well at least give these families closure. And, he doesn't care about that. But he doesn't give a shit about no. one of those people. But you think he would care about those people the more police because did, they though. were good, quote-unquote, good women. Right. The police him. did. You can't fault the police for taking this plea deal because they were able to, to uh, um, attain the remains of 12 victims were, that were exhumed and returned to their families. And on February 27th of 1984, Hanson would be brought to justice and was sentenced by jury to 461 years plus life in prison without the possibility of parole. He would uh, initially be imprisoned at the United States Penitentiary in Lewisburg. 
in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. So they gave him his wish of being right uh, put in a different state. However, I, don't, I almost feel like this is like a spiteful move. They moved him back to Alaska and jailed him in Lemon Creek Correctional Center later huh. on, then in Spring Creek Correctional Center. And then on May 11th, he was moved, May 11th of 2014, he was moved to Anchorage Correctional Center to receive medical attention uh, and shortly thereafter died in August of 2014 um, from an undisclosed health dis- health condition. Right. Um, and he had a do not resuscitate order on his file. Makes Hopefully sense. Hopefully it was painful. I think so. For a guy that um, was. He probably raped died. many women, kidnapped nice. them, stalked them, released them into the woods and shot and them in the back them. a lot of times with his rifle. Yeah. A lot of times they were blindfolded. Blindfolded and naked. Like yeah. Just it's got to be the wor- one of the worst ways. Worst you can feelings in the world, right? Helpless. Yeah. God, true scumbag. Because even if you even if you could see, I mean, you don't know where to go. Yeah. I mean, you're out there where only a plane can reach. There's not going to be any passing cars. Mm-hmm. No one can hear you. There's a scene in the movie where uh, um, he releases a girl, or there's a girl. He's got her tied up to the tree. Right. They're talking about frozen ground. Yeah. Um, and she she starts screaming, and he says, "No one can hear you out there." And you do get the sense that he probably did say that to some of these girls. Oh, you know, I'm, they, sure. I'm sure they were screaming out there, and he probably got off on the fact that it was so desolate where they were that they couldn't, no one could hear him. Right. You know, because like we said, these were places that you could only get to by plane. There's no one hiking way out there. There's no one driving out there. No. Nope. That's the thing about Alaska that makes it so interesting to study a serial killer in in Alaska, in the Anchorage area like that, because it's just anything can happen out there. It's crazy. It's like it's it's beautiful and untouched, but with that comes a, a mysterious danger. Uh huh. You know, it's like, oh man, I'd love to be there. Would you? I would move there someday. I really would. I, would like to. I heard you get a thousand dollars just for being a resident there. That's like cool. each person gets a thousand bucks, like tax to return type deal. Or yeah, I think it's oil. I think it's return. oil money. Like it's like some kind of oil. Yeah, they might not do that anymore though. You think they still do that? I'm pretty sure they do. Okay. Uh, let us know. I might um, Google it right now. Well, you know, we have instant information. Or you can do some shout outs. Kavik, let us know. Uh, any of our Alaskan listeners, let us know how awesome it is to live there because we're thinking about moving. We might we might take the creep van up there. <laughs> um, meanwhile, I'm going to give some shout outs. I want to say what's up to Angie in Sweden. Thank you for the awesome email. Uh, Joshua B and Nerdy Chick Fitness on Instagram. They happened to send like put up posts about our show today on Instagram this morning while I was like putting the final touches right. on this episode. And when you get short attention spans like us, it's, uh, it's all about timing. <laughs> it is. Friday mornings. If you want a shout-out, that's the best time to like post about us. <laughs> uh, also want to give a shout-out to the EON Project. It's a podcast that hit us up and, on Twitter and said they liked the show, and so definitely uh, check them out. Thank you, guys. Uh, Stephanie Z from our Snapchat, and also just the other Stephanie. I'm not sure what your last name is, but I hung out with her a little bit on Snapchat the other night. I just She's timing, like you said. Yeah. I was sitting there just hanging out and i just happened to check snapchat i was bored my wife and kid were asleep and i was just like sitting there like check snapchat and she posted a picture of a beer i'm like i'm gonna have a beer so i posted my beer and then we just had this little back and forth look at us we're having beers yeah Uh, we had beers together so adorable so what's up Steph? and then also andy b on snapchat what's up what's Um, up andy b people that send us just random snapchats i think those are fun so i I give you guys cool cool I can't believe how many people follow us on there. Like every day, people follow us on Snapchat. I need to I need to start logging in there and knocking you off so I can see. Yeah. Um, also, a couple quick iTunes reviews. These aren't all of them that we got this week, but uh, we don't have time to mention everybody. Just a few. Uh, John M., uh, Bam, it's Kelly, and Grackle Lackle. Thank you guys for your iTunes reviews. Yes. Very Those appreciated. It's always fun to read, guys. Thank Very you so much. Yes. If you have the time, guys, go over to iTunes. Give us a review. Yeah, uh, or whatever listening app you're listening on. Yeah, give us a review. Write up something helps. nice, or just click five stars if just you don't click feel like five stars up a and be like, I'm fucking tired of you guys. Yeah, I don't care. That's cool. You can say, you can do five stars and then just say all negative things. I like that. That's still okay. There's there's the opposite. There's somebody who wrote a, a glowing review. It was like a paragraph, a couple paragraphs long. Yeah. About how great we are, and then it was one star. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh damn I don't it! Think you understand they must how have... this works <laughs> <laughs> at all? Uh, five's a little better. You could go ahead and. Uh... I think maybe we they liked us and then we'd said something that pissed them off and they, they went back changed and, it and they just <laughs> but didn't they don't feel, feel like, like writing a new review <laughs> so they just said, I'm just gonna one star you uh, that happens that's cool that happens I want to give a shout out to uh, our buddy Robert from work him and oh, his fiance up? have been binging our show so yeah welcome to the welcome to the crew Robert that was cool to hear that he listens yeah so, it is it's cool it's always nice when like your friends like what you're doing too you know yeah and when it's awkward at work when they start talking about it around yeah. other people and you're like don't mention this don't please mention this. I don't really want to <laughs> have the everyone here know this <laughs> right me. yeah I know right. So it's all good though. Robert, what's up? Please don't talk about it at work. All Thank right. You. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, any other shout outs? Um, uh, no, check out our Patreon. I want to thank all the new Patreon supporters, all the old Patreon supporters, everybody that uh, yeah. 
We have exclusive episodes on there. Next week is going to be one. We still haven't narrowed down. It's between two people have right we? now. I thought we did. I thought we already narrowed it down. BTK or Green River Killer? Do Green River. Let's do Green River. I don't know, man. BTK. Vote. Vote, people. Patreon people. Let us know real Get fast. You got vote. like one day. Lauren put up a post on the Patreon about possibly doing the Green River Killer. Yeah. Go on there. Even though we already got a shit ton of good responses saying do it. Right. Uh, two bucks a month gets you all of our exclusive episodes thus far, yes. which we're... And our jo- eternal gratitude as well. Yeah. John Wayne Gacy and Jeffrey Dahmer. You can go listen to those right now for two bucks a month. And then also the new one that comes out uh, next week, either BTK yep. or Green River. You're going to be able to hear that as well. That's and right. also we put up a bonus... Down a little boneless bonus recording last week. Boneless. Of like a, a boneless recording of our uh, outtakes. Maybe that's what we should call it. Uh, we put up a little bonus recording of us just being idiots. Yeah. Uh, the shit that we cut from these episodes, we put it on. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna try and do that more often. Yeah. Even if they're just little cuts, just just little insights and yeah. our outtakes and whatnot. Yeah. So that's fun. Yeah, you get that. You get some just bonus crap that we throw on to Patreon. So there's a lot to offer. We're not saying. If you're a normal listener of the show and you're not a patron, we still love you. Thank you, Creepers. You're still amazing. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, All you got to do is get a review. That's like a great way to help the show. Like, if you like the show, if you're like, hey, I like or the just show, share but it. I can't afford it, hey, no big deal. Share it with okay. a friend. Share it with Put a, a friend. post on Instagram or yeah. Twitter. That always helps big time. Just sharing yeah. it on Instagram, putting up a post saying this show that I enjoy. Share right. it with all of your friends on Instagram. Or you could go... Because no one has real friends anymore. It's all virtual friends. So share it with your virtual yeah. friends. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, or you could go on Facebook and click on Shop Now and go to our store and buy you a little souvenir. Yeah, get your Creeper gear. That's right. We got shirts. We got hats. We got... Do we got hats? Uh, we don't have hats. We don't why, have... Do we, why do they not have hats on Redbubble? We need to get some. Yeah, we need some hats. Uh, but we do have phone cases and all kinds of other shit, so... Yeah. Pillows. Creeper gear. Get your Creeper gear. Uh, there's like clocks. <laughs> That's my dream okay. is to run into someone wearing a true crime guy's shirt oh, or like dude. just randomly. That'd be really cool. Oh my gosh. If I see you out in Vegas and you got a true crime anything, we're taking a picture. Dude, someone it. bought uh speaking of which stickers, someone for bought, me, not for you. You can buy <laughs> you can get stickers, just our original true crime guy stickers on our yeah. website, truecrimeguys.com, and just go to the top where it says stickers and just send right. us a donation of whatever, a couple bucks and we'll send you some stickers. Yeah. Someone recently, speaking of like running into people, yeah. The other day, someone bought stickers, and they live like two minutes from my house. It's a little eerie. I'm oh. like, whoa, that's crazy. That is, cra- that is crazy. Yeah. So, Well, thanks for buying stickers. Yeah. Come to our meetup next time we do one. Speaking of stickers, we also have um, some gold ones left. So yeah. if you're a $5, $5 or more donor, then you get... On Patreon. On Patreon. Then yep. you get a gold sticker. Yep. So I love sending those out. If you um, became a $5 patron or a $10 patron within the last week or so, yours got shipped out yesterday. Yeah, and we're still trying to line up um, our conversations with the ten dollar a month donors to Patreon. That's your perk. If you donate ten bucks a month to Patreon, uh, you yeah. get to have like a Skype conversation with us and hang out. Yeah, um, Friday we get to do it. Some us. people haven't wanted to do it yet. Like some of the ten dollar donors are just go. I just wanted to give you ten bucks a month. We're like, all right, yeah. that's cool. Um, and then other people were still trying to set up the Skype a day to do it. You right. know, it's it's tough because like we tried to do it last week, um, but they've got to create a Skype profile, and then you know it's just yeah. we got to so make sure you do that before you you reach out. Um, we'll try to reach out to you or whatever. Right. But um, anyways, yeah, that's fun. We're looking forward to talking to you guys. We're not awkward to talk to. We'd you. like to make a bonus episode of conversations we've had with listeners. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Just compile like little funny snippets from it. Yeah. We'll make you look All good. Right. Even if it's a boring conversation, we'll make you look good. You look so good. We'll play like music behind you and stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they make a joke, we'll add in a rim shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we drug this out long enough. We have. This is like the old old episodes where we just bullshitted forever. Well, but yeah, but we used to do it at the beginning. Yeah, at least Um, you got your uh, episode and you could have tuned out by now if you're bored by this. (laughs) So don't give us a bad review if you're bored. Just turn it off. Just turn it off. Yeah. Jeez. Fuck off. Fuck off. (laughs) Go give a review when you were still liking it. (laughs) I want to say what's up to DC TV just because I love that guy. Yeah. Love your videos, D. Yeah. And I hope I win. Go check out DC TV's YouTube once again. Can't recommend it enough if you like like weed. Oh, speaking, speaking of, of which, Vegas this weekend. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow. You Recreational weed sales start tomorrow. Can you hear the excitement in Michael's voice? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of, I got to go get out of here. Right? <laughs> I got to go. Yeah. No comment. All right. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, you can find us on social media, as we mentioned, mm-hmm. at True Crime Guys everywhere. Yep. Hit us up. We'll talk. We respond to everybody. Absolutely. We're approachable. It's all good. We'll throw you in the creep van and take you for a ride. Yeah, it'll be a blast. Keep creeping. See you next week. Keep creeping.